Okay, so uh, because Tallulah likes to run away, we're gonna work on a real simple recall exercise. Now, when I call a dog, before I call the dog, I'm ready. So I don't wanna have the dog look at me and then I'm kind of farting around with the treats. So what I do is I use a 90 degree bend in my elbow like this. So for dogs, for, as you can see right here for Emma, she's following my hand even though I have nothing in my hand. So from a dog's perspective, this looks like I have something. Now, if I always give a treat like this, the one time I don't have the treat, they can see, oh, you don't have anything, so I don't have to listen. So what I do is I start out with a 90 degree bend here, but I have the treat out in front of me. Now, if I want the dog to sit down, I go over their head. Now she has arthritis, so that's why she's not sitting, but usually I do this motion, the dog will sit, and as soon as it sits, I lower it, and I say, come, or whatever your command word is. That's good. Um, now, if the dog, if I say come and the dog doesn't come, if I keep on repeating the command word, well, then the dog doesn't have to listen because I'm gonna say it 10 times. So what I say is come, the dog doesn't listen, then I, say, then I go and start lowering it, come. So the second the, the tree touches the lips, she needs to hear the command word at the same exact time. Don't say it too early, don't say it too late. And then I like to scratch them under their chin, I just do that by habit. Now, so when she was over there, she wasn't coming, so I made the kissing sound, and most dogs will look. As soon as she did that, I started lowering it. See, the lower you go, the more enticing it is for the dog. So if the dog looks at you, and then you start lowering the treat, just like she did, she's gonna come in to get the treat. So this way, instead of having to say it over and over again, we can just say it once, then we make the kissing sound as soon as they look at us, then we start lowering it all the way to the floor if you have to, and then once they come over to you, I raise it over their head to get them to sit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a small handful. But we need to do it with Tallulah. Yeah. So yeah, we we're going, we're going to. Yeah, okay. I will here in a sec. And then um, Max, we're not going to have you participate right now because you're my cameraman. But eventually we will want to do this with at least three people. So you guys have the perfect dynamic. So I'd have one person sitting there, one person sitting here, one person sitting there. So that we have kind of a triangle. Three or more people. So the way I do that is I just offer something first and then we win. Okay, so I'm going to have you, um, now let's transfer all the treats into one hand except for one. And I'm going to have you actually go and sit in the chair that I was sitting in before so we have a little bit of back and forth. Now, uh, Emma is probably going to want to participate. We're just going to just give Tallulah the treat for now. We'll give Emma some treats later on. So now you have a hand kind of up here. So I want to have you start there. And then you're going to say C-O-M-E loudly. But let's, for, let's uh, yeah, go Can ahead. Can you say what? C O M E. Okay. I, I just want to say it. Okay. Just, so go ahead and say. In, in her name. I just say come. Come. Yeah, make a kiss. Well, there you go. Now wait. Now put it over here. Oh, and then, this one. Or this either one? with you, just the one with with one treat. Now give it to her, and say come. 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 Go ahead and uh, hold another one out and say come. Come. Kiss. Now raise it. Now look. Come. Now you started saying come there before she got it. Oh. So we don't want to say it until it touches her lips. Okay. Now if you want to watch me, come. Come. So I make the kiss to get the dog's attention. As soon as it looks at me, then I start lowering my hand to make it more appealing for the dog. Then the dog will come over. As soon as it comes, I raise it over their head to make him sit. Then I let him lick it off my hand and I tickle underneath and I say come at the same time. Now what we want to do is right now we have kind of a small area so it's easy to go back and forth. Now if it's just two people have it, after a while the dog starts going back and forth, pogoing without waiting. So what I usually do is have three people and so maybe Max is, we let Max be in charge. So Max is in charge and Max gets to point at who calls the dog next. So we don't want to have two people calling the dog at the same time. So go ahead and hold one out in, in your other hand and say come. Come. Raise it. Now lower it. Come. come. Now, do you notice how fast? As soon as you say come, she turned and then she started trotting by. So I'm guessing you probably didn't establish the benefit of coming on command. <laughs> so now we are. Now, if she comes to me and I don't want to, and I didn't call her, I go like this. I cross my arms across my chest and I look up to the side and I remain still, uninterested. Now, go ahead and call her again. Even if you don't have a treat, just go ahead and call her again. Come. Come. Perfect. Now, the one thing that, that, I, that I'm not happy about with this is you had to reach way over. So when I say come, so I can bring her in, come. I shouldn't have to reach over this far to give her the treat. She should come to where I want, not the other way around. 
So what I'm gonna have you guys do is practice this when it's the three of you, or if Max, or if you guys have some friends over here that wanna participate, more people is even better. But what I'd start out is in your living room, have one person in that chair, one person in this chair, one person here, so we have a triangle. And then Max or whoever's in charge gets to point at that person, the person before they call, they have the treat like this. I don't want the dog to look to, when I say call or I say come, they look up at me and this is what they see me doing, getting ready. I, when, I, I, when I say come, I want them to see me like this, so I'm ready to go. So this eventually becomes a very powerful hand signal, sit. Now she didn't come, so I'm just rewarding the sit. So first we wanna do it here, where it's just, we're about 10 feet apart. Then after she starts coming consistently, and if, if Emma is kind of, uh, I don't wanna say infringing, but if she's making it a little bit more challenging, maybe we put her outside and just, just focus just on Tallulah. So what we wanna do is eventually have somebody sitting at the kitchen table over there, and the other two people sitting here. Then eventually we have somebody sitting maybe back there, in one of the rooms back there. So the dog has to go gradually, we make the circle bigger and bigger and bigger, but in gradual steps so that she can master it. And eventually we have people at one end of the house and the other end of the house, and we're yelling and she's running to whoever called her. Now, once we've got it to the point where the dog is coming consistently inside, then I would practice it outside. Now, when it's outside, I would again just have her. Do this preferably before you feed, before dinner time, so she's more hungry, she's gonna be a little bit more motivated. And what we do when we go outside, there's a lot more distractions. So when we go outside, we make it a very short triangle again, 10 feet apart. And she's like, this is so easy. I just go to people and they give me really high value treats. That's what we want. And we say the word come the second it touches her lips. Then when we're in the backyard, we gradually make that circle or the triangle or whatever the shape is bigger and bigger to the point where we're on opposite ends of the yard and we say come and she runs over to us. So when you do that consistently and then have this hand motion, come. It's much easier. She's, she's happy to come to us because there's a benefit in it for her. Now, one last little caveat for the backyard. A lot of people, the only time they call their dog to come in the back, what's in the backyard, is when they, they want the dog to come inside. So for the dog, that means come means the end of playtime. I grew up in the 70s, and we used to go out in the neighborhood and play. My, when it was dinner time, my mom would open the door and say, David, dinner! And I was supposed to come home. Well, if I was having a lot of fun with my friends, I would just pretend like I didn't hear it. And we kept on playing, and then she'd do it multiple times. So the same sort of thing for dogs. A lot of dogs don't come to you when we call them because that represents the end of playtime. So what we would have you do was when Tallulah's outside playing in the backyard, every once in a while go out there with the treat, call her to come, put her in a sit, give her the treat, and let her go back to play. So now, come means I get a treat and a reward. Sometimes I get a come back inside or continue playing outside. Sometimes I come inside. I don't know, but I know that I always get a treat. Now, we always get a treat initially. Come. So if I say come and I tickle here underneath her chin at the same time she gets the treat, just like Pavlov's dog, Pavlov rang a bell at the same time he brought food out and that caused the dog to drool, then after a while he could ring the bell without the food and the dog would drool. So if I always tickle here at the same second, right after the, uh, the treat touches the tongue while they're chewing it, this becomes analogous with getting the treat. So if you do that every day, what I would suggest is for a week, every time they come, they get the treat and the pet underneath simultaneously. Then the next time that she, when we call, or the next week, half the time they get the treat and this, the other half the time they just get this. And then after a while, it's just this, because we're not gonna have to give them the treat every time, but because we've conditioned them, we're bribing them, don't get me wrong, but it creates a positive association. After a while, it just becomes habit. Once a dog gets a habit of doing something, that's what they continue to do. So this way, when she gets out, you can say, come, she comes right back to you to get the treat. So that's basically how we're gonna teach the dogs to recall on command. This is something I'd like you guys to practice at least once a day for a short iteration. It shouldn't be longer than about two or three minutes max. But sometimes it'll just be a minute or so. But try to do it like in the morning, in, in the evening. Don't always do it at the same time, it's very. And sometimes every person has five treats, sometimes everybody has 10 treats, sometimes everybody just has two treats. So they never know, but we make it into a positive association, a positive activity for them. And again, there's a reward. So every time that I come, I get a treat. Sure, I'm gonna come on command. So that's how we're gonna teach the dogs to recall on command.